Welcome to Minot Manners here on The Dakotan. I'm Jonathan Starr, and today I'm joined by the mayor of Minot, Tom Ross. Thank you for coming on today. Well, thank you for the invite. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. So we know you as a city councilman. We know Tom Ross as the mayor. But before and beyond all that, who is Tom Ross? Well, Tom Ross is a uh, is a kid who grew up on Park Street, just uh, out the front doors of the Minot Auditorium. You go about three blocks south, and that's where I grew up. Um, I'm one of six kids uh, in my family. My uh, dad was a heavy equipment operator for 40 years for a local contractor. And my mom was a, uh, a surgical nurse, a registered nurse for 40 years for uh, for one of, one of the hospitals in town. Uh, born and raised in Minot, uh, attended uh, Edison and attended Bishop Ryan High School. Went to uh, Minot State for a couple years and uh, got the opportunity to uh, attend uh, a broadcasting school in Minneapolis. So I jumped at that and kind of started my broadcasting career after that. So Very cool. So you had the opportunity to go to Minneapolis. You had the opportunity to finally get free from Minot, but you came back. Why? Well, and, and that's what's funny is, you know, I, I think I, I was, me growing up was not any different than a lot of young people in Minot. Right. Um, they get to that age and they go, oh, Minot's flat. There's nothing to do in Minot. And when I get, when I get to be the age where I can go, I'm getting out of Minot. And right. I'm not looking back. I did that. Um, I went to uh, Minneapolis, and then after Minneapolis, I came back for just a couple months while I was looking for a job. Got my first job in television in Southwest Kansas. Okay. Um, and, and then I moved to got another job in television uh, for a uh, independent TV station in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And um, they closed down. You know, they were following the Minnesota North Stars hockey team at the time. And nobody wanted to turn their TVs up to channel 41 to watch a losing hockey team. So right. uh, that station went belly up and, and it was, uh, you know, it was an opportunity to come back home to mine it. And so um, I, I could have stayed in Minneapolis, um, but, you know, it was kind of that time where I wanted to raise a family and kind of settle down. And and to me, there was no better place than mine in North Dakota. I would have to agree with that. You got to love the community that Minot brings, the love for each other that, to help out. Um, you just don't get that in other places. So, uh, first off, you became mayor a couple years ago now. Time's flying by, it seems. Over a year. A little year. About 13 months yep, ago. 13 months ago, which is crazy. It feels like that was just yesterday. That was one of our first interviews we actually had you right after you won that race. Um, how has that gone? How do you feel like it's been going on from your perspective? I'll tell you what I tell absolutely everybody who asks me about how's it going. Uh, I'm absolutely in love with being the mayor of Minot. We, right. um, it, man, there's just so much positive, young, positive energy going on in Minot right now. And for the most part, I get to be, I get to stand back and kind of be a cheerleader for it. So, right. um, you know, there was a lot of drinking from the fire hose right away. I'm sure. Uh, jumping right into, uh, you know, learning about the legislative process and, in you know, working on a plan to uh, to get some fast tracking for flood control. So we put a lot of hours, a lot of miles on that summer and fall before the legislative session. So a lot of things. But really, uh, the bottom line for me right now is that we have got, we've got that energy. We've got a lot of great things that have happened in the last 13 months in Minot. And uh, I believe that our council right now has got some really wonderful chemistry, right. very respectful. We work together, uh, and, and we're, we're solving things. We're finding solutions to problems that are happening in our community. Which is fantastic. It seems like in some of the, and we'll talk about some of the issues later, but in some of the recent council meetings, there's been some good discussion, at times maybe perhaps heated, but that's healthy. If there's no heated discussion, then we're not really able to talk and talk freely. And so that is, as you mentioned, something really good for you guys' team, if you would. Um, while you've been mayor, there have been a few things that have happened. One of those is moving of City Hall uh, from the old location closer to the public library to downtown Minot. Obviously, that was a big endeavor. That was took a few years to get that or took a few months to get that remodeled and all set up. Um how, what are the city employees saying of that? How is that going? Has that gone smooth for, for the employees? Yeah, it's a, it's really turned out to be uh, the feedback that we're getting from the residents and the feedback that we're getting from the employees is that it's just a, it's a, it's a wonderful workspace. 
That's awesome. Um, the technology is there. The the training rooms are there. Um, you're not you're not you know sitting on boxes of files, and you're not having right. to move things around. There's enough room, and there's enough room to grow if need be. Um, but it's uh, you know it's a uh, it's a beautiful icon for the city of Minot to be proud of. Absolutely, and I believe that the timing was great because right around when city hall moved in or city offices moved in, uh, Trinity moves out. And so if you have both of those buildings empty downtown along with the big M, then it's becoming a little bit of a isolated place, but it's good that there's that traffic. Now it seems like I, I'm downtown almost daily. Um, and it seems like there's a law in traffic downtown. And I've talked about this with different people. Um, is there any feedback on how that really affects the downtown businesses and, and, D- just the general traffic down there. You know, I, and you may see it one way. I see it different because yep. I go down, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. It's busy. Uh, it, man, it is bustling. It, it's yep. vibrant. We've got some independent investment going on downtown uh, with the facade improvement program, just right. the look, the, uh, you know, and, and that's where that, I think that positive energy, that positive mm-hmm. young energy that that sees something different for downtown, sees it more of a vibrant thing. Yes, having Trinity move out, I mean, it's great. They've got a beautiful campus exactly. there, and that is just, I, it's going to spur so much development on that southwest side of town. But you can look at it like that's an empty hospital, or you can look at it as that's an opportunity for something to come in to benefit downtown. Yeah. And that's sort of what I'm looking at. That's sort of what the economic development people are looking at. So, um, you know, it's going to take some work. I, I, I'm, um, I'm fearful or not fearful, but I think there could be an opportunity or if they, if they study it, they may just come back and say, you know, the best thing to do with that building is to, is to raise it and and start from scratch. Right. Yeah. Probably not the end of the world in the long run. I think it's going to be good because if Trinity stays there or tries to remodel that, you still have that old icon that it is. And it's nice, but it's not with the current plans of the downtown. There needed to be some major renovations done. Have you heard of anything uh, imminent plans for that the Trinity Hospital, the downtown one. You know, the only the only ones that that, that have been that I've heard about is kind of a multi use. I know we went to the legislature as a community uh, with with uh, some people from Trinity and a local committee to get some funding to kind of turn it into a um, a, a school of nursing, uh, a behavioral right. health center, and then childcare have kind of a mixed use for that. Uh, you know, that just, that idea came up. I think the timing was just off on it. Mm-hmm. I think if we have more time as a, as a community to develop that idea, I think there, are, there could be an opportunity for some type of mixed use in there. Uh, you know, we're in desperate need of nursing and that's not right. just in mine it in North Dakota, that's across the country. Right. So if we can, if we can build something like that and have something like that, I think there's an opportunity there. But once again, you know, one of the, one of the legislators said during the, during the session, we can have all these CTE buildings, we can have all this brick and mortar, but if you don't have anybody to fill them, right. They just sit empty anyway. So right. we've just got to find, we've got to find the people. Right. Absolutely. Well, we're going to change topics a little bit and talk about some of the issues that you guys have been facing uh, during your city council meetings. Uh, One of the most common ones that was covered for a few city council sessions was the HRC ordinance or the Human Relations Committee ordinance. Um, It appeared to be just a run-of-the-mill ordinance, and then suddenly it started getting a lot of feedback from the public, uh, filling the new chambers several times with people that were eager to voice their thoughts on the matter of course um first off i would just like to hear what your thoughts were on that uh, in general with these the public outcry your thoughts on that of of there there's just them showing up well you know to me that is a perfect example of why the process is set up to be the process it is right you have you have the you have the the first the first reading you have the first adoption then you wait until the next meeting and you get feedback and you know that's where that's where uh, we get the engagement, and that's where we got the feedback. And um, you know, I I honestly felt I, I felt that we were we were breaking something to fix it. Um, and I, you know, I said it a couple times during the meetings that 
you know, it, 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 I would support a change coming from the original committee. I always wanted to stand up the original committee, get them to look at it, and get them to get say, hey, we can, we want to make these changes. That's right. what I would. That's what. Uh, that's what I would have supported. Right. Um, in that original committee, we could have up to twenty members, so each council member could have could have appointed three members to that, mm-hmm. and provided a, a more a more um, uh, representative look at our community that would look at that. Uh, but what was approved were the seven members, and um, they're actually going to be meeting. I think. Um, What's the date on the on the fifteenth? So next okay. week they're going to have their first meeting. So um, you know, I I'm not um, I I don't have any way that uh, I I don't know what to expect. Bottom right. line for me, um, yep. I I just um, you know, like I said, I I think we were t- we were trying to break something just so we can fix it, and that's that's not the way to do things. Right. From both sides, there was some very strong thoughts that were shared. Um, obviously, it came down to some sensitive issues. Um, people saying uh, there was just some very wide remarks, some that I don't even really want to go over specifically, but I do want to ask this question on it. How did you feel like that represented Minot? Was it a true representation of Minot? Was it skewed? Um, you had people uh, getting very personal in some of the remarks um, thing, and things like that. Just in general, how did you feel like it represented Minot? I um, I think it represented my well. We had plenty of time, and and that's one thing I campaigned on was giving people a voice. Right. Uh, at at every meeting, you have an opportunity uh, to be heard, and because of the way this felt fell, and because you know we had Alderman Pittner gone, and then we had Alderman yeah. Potagula gone, and then we had Alderman or Alderwoman uh, Evans gone, and then we had myself gone. So right. it just kind of extended it, you yep. know, and, and that gave more opportunity for feedback. The feedback that I received, and I'm not, you know, it was, you know, I, I'm going to say it was probably 70-30, mm-hmm. you know, for, um, for not moving forward with it. Right. And, you know, I think I... To me, that was there was plenty of opportunity to voice going one way or the other, and um, and I I think both sides spoke very loudly. Right, right, and and I'm thankful that you guys gave that opportunity as as is the the standard. But I think it was good. I think it was also great to see the city show up. And it was mentioned by one of the council members. You know, love to see this at the budget meetings, and we would because I. I Kim and I, we do a monthly live podcast and, and I'm like, show up for the budget meeting, voice your concern. You, you hate property tax, show up and let them know about it. You want property tax, whatever is your issue, because how else will you guys be able to hear that? I mean, there's the emails, there's other ways and there be respectful and all that, but show up. I think that's an important thing that cannot be overlooked in city politics. And, and that is that is so very true. And I'm hoping, um, I, I'm really hoping in my heart of hearts that we have more engagement than we've had in the past. I've been through, now this will be, uh, what, my third budget? Uh, possibly, oh, well, my fourth budget um, that, that I've been uh, been a part of. So I'm, I'm hoping, uh, you know, with the new city hall, the, the access to it, um, and, and just it seems like more people seem to be engaged. So right. um I'm hoping we get more more people coming up to talk. Another or issue to provide input. Right, very good. Another issue that's coming up that's more recent and it probably will go away soon is the rezoning of some areas uh, downtown that's allowing for the halfway homes. There's been a lot of interesting feedback on this, um, and, and really, and maybe I just have the wrong take on it. Feels like a lot of people are saying, "Yeah, we're for this, just not my backyard." Um, what's been kind of your consensus on the feedback that you have received? Well, it's, you know, the, it's, it's the not in my backyard people. Right. Um, the thing that I see is, and, and Alderman Padragula brought it up uh, last night at the meeting, is that, you know, it's funny to me that they don't want that in that area, but just two blocks east of those same houses has been a treatment facility for as long as, I mean, for 20 years. Right. Right. And, and that seems to be that seems to be OK. Yeah. What my thing is, is that we've got we've got mothers with children and, 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 and pregnant women who. They're not forced to be there. 
Right. They're asking to be there. They're asking for a second chance. Right. They're going to be there. They've got children or they're going to have children. So they're looking for a second chance to get back on their feet. Right. They're not the kind of people that are going to be busting out of there and running down the street just to get a, a, a couple shots of booze at a local bar. Right. For crying out loud, we had, we had the emergency room there. And when I was a reporter, we had gang fights in the emergency room. That didn't seem to bother anybody. Right. But now we have people who want a second chance to get back on their feet and to be out in the community. And we're saying no to that. Right. And, and really, that even goes back to the point of the people who did this, the, the, the people who want to put this project together, they did everything they were supposed to do. And then mm-hmm. with 10 seconds left in the game, we're going to move the goalposts. Right. That's not fair. That is not fair. And, and it is probably more than just illegal. I mean, we right. would be setting ourselves up for a lawsuit. Right. But that's, you know, that's beyond it. I mean, we right. need to help people. We need services like this in mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I have a friend that runs a house um, on the northeast side of town. And I believe he's also working on one uh, close in that area. Um, and it's incredible the stories that come from the people that they're able to help get on the back on their feet. And that part cannot be overlooked because it is an issue. The, the, uh, whatever demic of drugs and alcohol and things like that, that's going on. It, it's an issue how it's taking people's lives, which also brings us to another thing. Am I not that is oft overlooked because of the seasons that we have and that's homelessness. Do you view that being a problem in mind? Yeah, I, I do. You know, and, you know, as we talked before, um, it's probably more noticeable in the summer months. And, right. you know, I, I, I forget the exact term, but they call it, they call it couch homelessness in the wintertime where they just bounce from home to home. And, yeah. Um, but we've got some things in the works we, with Project B and um, uh, on the south end of town out there, they're putting up uh, a family homeless shelter. They're moving the, the food pantry there. Uh, so there's a lot of things that are working on, on helping right. alleviate that situation. That's fantastic. Now, I was told, and I am not as well versed in this as I should be. So today I get to learn or, or we get to explore later. Um, but some of these, some of the solutions, um, even during the winter, they only provide help during the evening. They don't provide a place during the day. So it's difficult um, for people that are trying to get a job. They have to get a job that they work during the day. They cannot work in the evening. Um, and then also the term that they can stay with those places. Sometimes it's limited um, to the amount of days they can, which can be difficult when you're trying to get on your feet. Um, is there a solution that actually, or what solution do we have that brings people to actually be able to get on their feet to that point where they're able to get into their own lease, get into their own home, um, and truly help alleviate the problem if they're willing, if they want the problem to be alleviated? Yeah, I, you know, I think that's where a combination. So you have the, you have the, maybe it's the temporary shelter or maybe it's the, you know, I, I'm not sure the, the length of time that they can stay with once the, the Project B is, is right. up and running. I'm not exactly sure of that. But in that period of time, you know, I think the resources are going to be there for them okay. to get up on their feet and, and, and get them to that point of let's take the next step. Right. You know, it's we've, we've gone through here. Um, we, we've, we've been able to find a job and if it's depending on the hours, however that works. Right. Um, but then they have that time to, to maybe build up that reserve to where they can take that next step and move into some, uh, LMI housing that right. we've got, we've got plenty of it and we've got more and more coming online, uh, all the time. Fantastic. So I, I, I really believe in my heart that the community is going to step up or has been stepping up right. to help that because, it, you know, it is a problem and it needs to be addressed. Right. And that's one thing Maya is good for having a strong community, people that truly help, truly want to care for each other. Um, one more issue that is right in front of us glaring at us, the budget. Uh, it was called in Monday's or in the last Monday's uh, city council meeting, difficult times by the city manager. Um, it seems scary as, as you're going through that, looking at these numbers, trying to see how it's going to balance. It seems scary. Some of the numbers that are being mentioned, um, when you go to the things that were proposed that aren't being met, it looked like there was several million dollars of things that just are not able to be included in the budget. Um, we've had to dip into the reserves the last little bit. Um, obviously, there's a 
concerted effort to make sure that we don't increase taxes. There's a small tax increase that we'll talk about. Um, but, but we're beginning to rely more on sales tax, which may be some view that as a good thing. Some view that as a bad thing. Um, What's your view of the budget and how, how this process is going? You know, as I said last night, I think Harold and the department managers, you know, they were faced with, I, I think the initial number that I heard was like around $6 million. They got that down to four. And then they went back in and they did some more carving and carving and they sharpened their pencils. And they got that down to, I, I believe it's like a 1.5. Um, or, you know, and, and so that, equates into a 0.63 mil levy increase. Right. And, and we have to, you know, it's the tough thing. It's, um, you know, being an elected official, these are the decisions that people make, you know, ask you to make for them. Right. Um, and it's, it is, it is difficult. My thing is, um, I think mine, it has been, um, we've got to change uh, mine it from being a place where we train employees to move someplace else, right. meaning uh, I, I think, I don't know the number exactly, but a, a firefighter can go four hours to the east mm-hmm. of Minot and make probably nine to $10,000 a year more, wow. just going four hours east. Right. Or, I mean, you can go to Dickinson and probably make, you know, six to $7,000 more. Yeah. You know, just that's a problem. Just going that far. So we've got to get out of that. And, and you know, right now we're still looking at, we're looking at a deficit of having police officers uh, on the street. Right. And, um, you know, it's difficult. Um, it's been dis- difficult the last few years. But if we don't have a wage that that they can survive on and live on, then we're, we're going to have, we're going to have that problem for years to come. And I don't want that. Right. We need police officers on the street. We need first responders, whether it's police fire, we need them here and uh, we need them to say mine, it's their home and they're going to stay here. Right. Um, there's, there was a lot of focus on the police department um, with the budget as far as just equipment uh, to to employees, and then obviously there's the renovations that are happening and what the new home will be. Um, it, was the city was the police department behind the times? Was it something that had been neglected, or is it just something upkeep? Yeah, I I think a I think a combination. You know, they were um, for the most part when city hall was there, um, they were kind of landlocked. Right. You know, they they there was no place for them to move. Now that City Hall moved out, they maybe have some more breathing space to get to move some things around. It's going to cost some money for renovation. Uh, and that's, um, you know, I, I don't think it was I don't think it was neglect. I think it was just a sign of the times of um, having, you know, needing more officers. Right. Um, and um yeah, I just, I don't like the word neglect. I understand I really, that. I, I really don't because, you know, they do, th- those officers do um, do so much with, with what they have. And right. um, I see them out. I see them, I see them interacting in the community. And those are good things. Right. Those are very good things. And uh, we just need to get up to a full strength. Right. where, um, you know, we cut down on overtime, we cut down on burnout, we cut down, and we start focusing on even more on uh, their mental health. Because you work those extra hours, you see things that you and I will will never see in our lifetime. Yes. They see them, um, could be on a daily basis, could be on a weekly basis, and that takes a toll. Right, yeah. It's a thankless job. Um, so if you're out and about, make sure you do think a, a, pl- a police officer, a, a firefighter, people that are helping keep us safe on a daily basis. Um, Something else that came up in the budget meeting was a little bit of new revenue uh, through fire inspection fees, and there was a couple other fees. There was a comment made about the lack of tax increase, keeping the money in the pockets of the citizens. But there's also some other fees that will then be imposed on those same citizens. Um, Obviously, fire inspection might be done through the businesses, um, but we have a lot of small businesses in Minot, um, and there were some other fees with the pub- public works with the, the, the landfill and stuff like that. Um, is that just something that's necessary that, that we just haven't been doing that's been provided as a service that shouldn't be, or what, what's the view? Absolutely, and it, it, I, I hate to say, I hate to this statement is nothing's free anymore. You know, we've got to, we've got, you know, when you, when you invest, if you're a small business person and you invest in an employee, 
you need that employee, that investment to pay off. If you start giving your product away for free, right. that, 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 there's the value. I mean, if, if you, the value will be cut in half or whatever. Right. But we've been offering, we've been offering a lot of services for free. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's just a step towards coming up part of the times that we have to do. We're going, our team, whether it's fire, whether it's our sanitation department, they're going above and beyond. And they're doing, uh, they're doing a lot of work that, um, th- that they should be getting, that they should be getting paid for. Right. Well, let's not stay in all the troublesome issues. Let's get to something fun. Um couple months ago now, a month and a half ago, uh, there was something done by the uh, class with NDSU. Um, it was called Imagining Minot. Um, and that's where an architecture class went and showed a vision for Minot. This was done by 16 st- students who put together ideas of what downtown Minot could look like. It was led by the professor, Christy Hansen. I don't know, you may have seen it. They put together a video presentation that showed renderings of what a potential downtown Minot would look like. It included hotels, it included a lot of green spaces, some unique ones on top of roofs and things like that, um, and some really spectacular concepts and ideas. Um, as I looked at, at that, I will be honest, I was the pessimist. I was like, what does this really mean? Because this is great rendering, but it's difficult for me to imagine a downtown that looks like that. Um, even a little bit with our current vision, which I think is fantastic. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what does that really mean? Oh, I, th- I think it's, I think it's wonderful. And it it's is. done yeah. some, it's done some great things it, it, in its short life that we've been able to experience it. Right. Um, yeah. Are we going to put up $120 million multicultural perfor- performing arts, you know, uh, arena or, or theater right. Uh, just, just right across Broadway? Probably not. Mm-hmm. But there's some low hanging fruit there, and really, really, what it, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it because I got to talk to these students, right? I got to interact with them, and they they took this. This wasn't just a class project to them; they took it seriously. They took it as an opportunity, you know, somewhere down the road, if they ever come back to mine it, and one of those projects is completed, right? They had a they had a part in that, and yeah. I think that is very very cool. That's coming from that's coming from a guy whose dad helped build this new city hall years right. ago. My dad was a part of the construction wow, company, so being a part of that is is very cool. Yeah. But to see that, but if if anything else, what it's done, it started a conversation. It has told people, or it has shown people the potential the city of Minot has, or the community has. It, it's 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 really a solid message to outside investors saying, look, there's opportunity there. And we are, we will, I predict, we will have a hotel, one, if not two downtown, wow. um, before the next, within the next probably five years, wow. we'll have that. Did that come from the imagining? Maybe it started. Right. Maybe it's, you know, the, these developers were thinking about it, but then they Affirmed. saw it. But then... A combination of of the imagining mine it. They had a dream, and they maybe came to mine it to pay a visit, and were downtown and saw that energy, saw the energy in mine it, and said, right. you know, the, mine it is going places, right? And we want to be a part of that excitement, which is an incredible thing, truly. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I feel like Minot, compared to other towns, isn't a a town that has really. It's starting to. It has for the past couple of years. But a lot of citizens don't prioritize the downtown as other communities. Even, I'll say it, Bismarck and Fargo is the most popular one. Um, Will this change that? The idea of a motel downtown or a hotel downtown to me is a little bit outlandish because do people really want to stay there? But but you're saying that this is something that should happen, could happen, and will happen in the next five years. Um, how, how is that changing kind of the dynamics of, of Minot a little bit? To me, you know, uh, growing up, I mean, that was uh, Main Street was my was my shopping right, center. Right. You know, um, my grandma worked at at Woolworths behind the lunch counter. Yeah. We bought our we bought our jeans at J.C. Penney downtown. The right. Empire Theater was was where my mom and dad's best babysitter. They'd send us there with seventy five cents on a Saturday right. to watch five episodes of Planet of the Apes, and we we're exactly. gone all day. That was the life of downtown. Right. Uh, and, and we've got a group downtown that 
that is pouring a lot of energy into it and they're getting that back. It, it's baby steps. You right. know, you're seeing investment. You, we've got construction projects happening on main street right now. And this is small business construction projects, let alone what we've got the, the, the big M mm, building. Right. So it's going to take a while. It's going to take a, a few years, but we're already seeing it. We're yeah. already seeing investors saying, I want to put a restaurant in here. I want right. to, I, I put a restaurant in here and here. And so they've got things going on. The Monument Area Council of the Arts, they had their last um, party on Main Street last Thursday. Right. I've never seen so many people at one of those than last Thursday. It's just the stepping stone. That's you know, awesome. You know, people, people, are, people are saying next year, it, they're going to be bigger and better. You got to be a part of that. People right. want to be a part of stuff that's exciting, and that's what's happening downtown. I think that's fantastic. I, I love downtowns, and it's fantastic when you're able to buy into that community. That it also creates uh, people that are willing to support each other, truly support the local small business, uh, the individual, the family. Um, so that's exciting. I'm excited for what the downtown will be. I'm excited for that culture that will be created. Another new development, we talked about this recently on the same podcast, but Nor North Hill High School, uh, that's obviously a big thing. It's neat to hear the story behind it and how the city prepared for this really many years ago um, with the agreement that was had with ING or Cognizant. Um, how is that coming in? How do you feel like that will truly affect the city as a whole? I think it's, uh, I think it's long overdue. Um, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great for development in that part. I live on North Hill. Right. So seeing a school, seeing a, a, a facility, a campus like that, uh, literally probably five, six blocks west of where I live, is going to spur development, is going to spur investment on, on the north side, which has been lacking. I mean, we, you know, once again, I, I hate to go back to when I grew up, when I was growing up, but there was such a focus on going south. Yeah. And, and, and North Hill has been kind of ignored, so mm -hmm. to speak. But having uh, having the, the school district and having the city of Monet and the residents say, we want to put a major investment on our north end of town, that's that's another one of those signals to outside investors saying, Monet's a growing community. Right. Things are happening in Minot. How can we be a part of that? And we're going to, you know, they're going to have that, that, that beautiful swimming arena that is going to attract competitions. You know, national competitions are going to be at this arena, and you can't help but not want to develop close to that. Right, yeah. And it also helps with the, the family. You know, we, you talk about the developers that are coming in and also the families when you begin to see dimensions to Minot. When I moved here 15 years ago, it was you go to Dakota Square Mall, and that's where you hang out. That's Minot. Um, you can go find a restaurant there, the food court or Applebee's and there's up the Creek or now Badlands, uh, and, and stuff. And it's amazing how it's changed the last 15 years, but, but adding that dimension where you have a downtown, you have that South Hill, that Trinity area, you have the Dakota square area, and then you have a North Hill. It creates a more dimensional town where people are like, Hey, there's something here. Uh, keep more air force people, keep more people like that, um, that are moving in, that are coming into our, our town. So Overall, is mine not doing all right? Oh my God! Oh wow! We uh, we really are. We we you know, and, and and when you talk about the hospital and you talk about the South End, we can't not ignore uh, the fact that uh, another epic building, uh, the tracks, right, and that multi-use. It's it's um, if you've been to the lights in West Fargo, this is going to be twice the size of that. And I've had the opportunity to see the lights in West Fargo twice. So I, I haven't. Tell me about the lights and tell me about what that will look like in Minot. It is, um, it, it, it's unbelievable. Okay. okay? I, it, I can show you pictures on my phone. Right. It's just not going to be, give it justice. Uh, it's a multi-use. So okay. it's, it's commercial on the lower floors. And I, I know the tracks are going to, they're going to put a hotel in mm -hmm. out there and um they're gonna have um you know a, a hockey rink concert venue wow. you know out there Neat. so it's going to give a whole new dynamic right to that end of town to where we're going to have not that we don't have outside concert venues right but this is going to be something that is built specifically for that right and to have those events in the summertime to have events in the wintertime uh and and it's going to be public use right it's, um so I, I, I would neat. really encourage you if you're ever there, 
just stop in and take a look at, at, at the lights in West Fargo. It's, it's really, you know, and if you do, take a look at that and just imagine that the tracks is going to be twice the size of the lights. Wow. You know, and, that's incredible. And, that's, and that shows a lot of, um, that shows a lot of uh, confidence mm-hmm. in these developers uh, to build and mine it. Now, the, the, you know, a lot of it's going to be condo space and, and uh, apartment space, and we can't forget the, the companies that help build the apartment uh, inventory that we already have. They're there. They're, they're doing it. They're doing right. wonderful things. Yep. But we've got, you know, jumping around, we've got this, this Sentinel project coming in, you know, probably seven years, seven, nine years. Okay. That's going to bring about 3,000 people to town. Wow. And we've got an opportunity there mm-hmm. that um, this is going to be their last stop in this, um, this billion-dollar project that they're redoing all the the missile silos right uh in the in the air force um but the the neat thing about it and if the city of minot plays their cards right we're going to have all the skilled labor we're going to have all these techie guys uh and women we're going to have them here in minot as their last stop right so if we plan our economic development efforts around that yes we've got a built-in workforce right that That's we huge. can we can now um, we can grow from 50 to 55 to, you know, close to 60. Right. And that helps everybody. That does. That does. Absolutely. Yeah. The, I was in a downtown area and it sounds like there was something unique, uh, like the tracks. Um, you mentioned we don't have an outside concert venue or, or a dedicated one like the tracks. I think what's neat about it is you're able to go to theoretically, you're able to go to the mom and pop shop. Then you're able to stop by, get some food, all while being in this central area uh, close to the, the event that's going on. I think that's really neat. It's kind of what the downtown has going on on their Thursday nights, yeah. what they tried to do there, except in a dedicated true space that will fit it really well. Um, so excited for that. Any other new developments that you really want to talk about that really show what's going on in Minot? I know we talked a l- about a lot of the big ones. You know, there are some there are some developments that are in the works that I probably am not at – Yes, liberty to understand. talk about, so to speak, but we've got some big things. We've got, you know, we we've got developers that are looking at mine it and and looking, you know, not for just onesies and twosies. These are these are big time developers that are looking at um, um, putting up, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of homes um, that that we need, right? Um, that we will need and that we will need in order to continue uh, to, to grow. To uh, continue to grow, but really, I you know, you look at. You go back on the last, you know, 12 months, what have we done? We've cut the ribbon on a new hospital. We've cut the ribbon on a new city hall. We broke ground on a new $100 million hospital. We cut the ribbon on a $20 million uh, children's discovery center. Right. Um, you know, and um, in the next in the next uh, 12 months, I mean, you know, two big projects. We're cutting the ribbon on, on a new fire station that's right. going to provide better, quicker, faster response times to the to a, a, a section of town that has really struggled, you right. know, uh, with fire protection. And then, um, you know, we're going to be cutting the ribbon on on this new high school. Right. You know, the Sentinels. So it's incredible. We just got you know, well, and let's not that, let's not forget uh, friends at uh, Minot State University with. Uh, the improvements they've made in their summer, their amphitheater, right. and the improvements that they're making to Hartnett Hall, which is yep. totally going to change the game there, right. let alone the improvements they've done in the Dome, making that, I mean, it was a world-class, a world-class uh, The improvements that they made is really turned that into, you talk to some of the basketball player, parents that have traveled to all the Division II schools mm-hmm. in our conference, um, they'll say that this is by far the nicest arena. That's that, incredible. Uh, nicest uh, basketball venue that uh, in NCAA. So. Well, it's a good time to be in Limp Minot. It is. It absolutely is. Absolutely. Well, really appreciate you coming on today, Mayor. Uh, appreciate your input, your feedback, and I hope that we can do it again sometime. Anytime. I love talking about Minot. Sounds great. This is another episode of Mine Not Matters here on the Dakotan and brought to you by Shock Safe and Lock. Be sure to dis- to subscribe to the Dakotan on YouTube um, and follow us for some future content and updates. Thank you and have a great day.